Rainbow Six Siege has recently had an update which unlocks the NVIDIA Reflex API. And in today's video, we're going to be testing this game as well as Valorant and seeing what the difference this API makes and if it does indeed do what NVIDIA claims, and that is helps lower the latency. Now, latency is one of those things that I believe personally is important for the most competitive of competitive gamers. I think if you are learning how to play a game or you're on your way to becoming a pro, it's not as important as your skill. But if you do need an advantage in a tournament, then this is where it can come down to even a couple of milliseconds. Though one more thing Nvidia claims is that this technology helps people across all different monitors and a lot of different graphics cards where the Reflex technology can support 900 series graphics cards and up. For instance, if you've got a GTX 970, you can take advantage of this technology if the game supports Reflex. So today, what we're gonna be doing is putting all these claims to the test. And now I usually use a 1000 FPS camera here at Tech Yes City. So then at 1000 FPS, we can match one FPS to one millisecond, and that can tell us our total system input delay. And this build is from Corey from Designs by IFR. It's a amazing custom PC that's built up to play Rainbow Six Siege with maximum FPS. But since this PC, which has a 10900K and also an RTX 3080, it can not only just play Rainbow Six Siege with over 600 FPS, it will be pretty much able to play any other competitive multiplayer title with ridiculously high FPS. But with that said, let's finally get into the testing where I'm gonna take you guys through the numbers and also all the process on getting these numbers so you can see just how low latency these PCs and also monitors and mice have become over the years. So our first test that we've completed now is 360 Hertz with the RTX 3080. And you'll notice here that we've got an average millisecond score of 9.2. And we've also got a standard deviation below that of 2.9 with a minimum of 3.7. And the minimum here is quite impressive. That means that the time we hit the mouse button to the time it took for a frame to come out on the screen, that was 3.7 milliseconds in total. This is by far the lowest numbers I have seen. And before that, I was getting really low numbers on CSGO, where I think I had maybe a 3.9 milliseconds. This has beat that with 3.7. And in fact, when I was doing the different kinds of tests here, I even saw a minimum of 2.9. That's insanely quick, considering that's everything from start to finish on when a frame comes out on your screen. Now I have cross-referenced the numbers from this LDAT device here. This device essentially makes it so you can get all your results and get them reliably out on a graph with the numbers that you need. And usually I would do this with testing 1000 FPS and then checking each individual benchmark that we've done and then put that into a graph and give you guys numbers. There's also one more method you can do to check for input latency and that's using this monitor right here, which essentially has one of these modules built into it. But what this does is you can turn on the input latency testing and then if you have a compatible mouse, you can then get live readings of the input latency in real time. However, let's get into the numbers here with reflex on versus reflex off for Rainbow Six Siege. And for this, I have to test in the training grounds. Now, NVIDIA have got to the stage where I'm finding having G-Sync on, especially with this 360 Hertz monitor here, is actually giving you even less average milliseconds. So we just finished up testing out the 60 Hertz monitor here, and the FPS is still extremely high since we're using the RTX 3080. It's still getting max FPS. And so what we're looking at here with the average milliseconds, we did see that the reflex on plus boost was helping out even at 60 Hertz. It was actually helping out a little bit more if we look at absolute values, where we did have a 1.3 millisecond reduction on average. The minimum was 0.3 milliseconds lower. And I'd say that that would have to do with mainly the render latency being reduced on 60 Hertz, just like it is reduced on the 360 Hertz. I think that's the biggest difference when it comes to the minimums. But we see here with the standard deviation, basically if you guys don't know what standard deviations are, we have of course our first, second, and third standard deviations. And then after that, we have our outliers or our anomalies. And this is 5.5 milliseconds, that is one standard deviation. So the higher this number is, the worse it is for competitive gameplay. So you do want this number as low as possible. So that would mean the minimum and maximum are much closer to the average millisecond number. And on top of that, we do want this average millisecond number to be as low as possible as well. But with that aside, let's get into the GTX 1070 numbers to see what the difference is between 
the 10 series card versus the latest and greatest 3080. So we just finished testing out the GTX 1070 in Rainbow Six Siege, but it's time now to do all this again and change over to the RTX 3080 and then change back to the 1070 in Valorant. And so with all the testing done and all the explanations on how we've got to these results right here, it's finally time to present them and make some conclusions for how good or possibly bad the NVIDIA Reflex technology is. And we're gonna start off with the really good first because I think this is actually one unintended benefit of Reflex and that is it's gonna help people more so on a budget where if you're on a 60 Hertz monitor, you are going to get the biggest benefits out of Reflex where this is where we saw an average result of roughly 25% reduction in input latency, we can see that the trend here is very strong in that we're going to get quite a sizable drop by turning reflex on and having the boost on versus having it off, at least with a 60 Hertz monitor. However, when we then step across to the 360 Hertz realm, it does get to be a little bit trickier here where it does depend on the game and the settings that those games like. For instance, if you are playing Rainbow Six Siege, you will want to have G-Sync on, at least with the 360 Hertz ASUS ROG monitor. In some cases, we went from say 14.6 milliseconds down to 9.2 milliseconds on average, which if you're a professional gamer and you're playing for money, for instance, a drop in 33% of your input latency is actually quite sizable and it's nothing to be ignored. Though now contrasting that to Valorant, this is where having G-Sync off was slightly better. So maybe if you're a pro Valorant player, you may wish to leave G-Sync off. And it's one of those things where even though I'm not a top tier player, if I step into a game of Dota 2, I still like to play my best. So I would turn a reflex on even though Dota 2 doesn't have reflex just yet. Nvidia, you gotta release reflex on a Dota 2, please. So now some closing thoughts on the whole situation. And that is if you are a pro gamer, you're probably gonna to wanna to use a blend of low or medium settings maybe epic view distance in the case of Fortnite, uh, but usually most pro gamers will use a lot of low settings to keep the FPS as high as possible and make sure there is no stuttering. And so that's the testing that we did here today. For instance, in Valorant, we turned most of the settings on low. Anisiotropic filtering, I like to leave that on 16X as it does especially help you see enemies from afar. And so that's one thing I like to leave on all the time. And it's mainly a CPU setting but it doesn't really make a difference in terms of if you're using even a four core eight thread, you shouldn't notice much of a difference at all in FPS in the grand scheme of things. So we do like to leave that setting on. The last thing I touched on in the intro, and it is important to note that it's all cool to have the latest and greatest gear, like an RTX 3080 and a 99, but having all this fancy gear isn't going to substitute for the fact that you do need skill in order to get really good at a video game and you can get good on a cheap budget setup as well as a 60 hertz monitor. And I dare say that before you get into spending money on an i9 and an RTX 3080 or a fancy brand new Ryzen 9, then I would focus on getting a mouse, a really good mouse that suits your hand and suits your play style and has low input lag. And there's plenty of mice out there that will do the job. If you guys wanna check out, for instance, my friend uh, Rocket Jump Ninja, he does a heap of different reviews on mice and he does a good job on letting you know which mice are really good and which are bad. Uh, follow his recommendations and you'll be gaming and on the path to greatness. Also another thing we did here at the studio was I did cross-reference the results from the LDAT to the uh, Logitech G3 mouse that's actually not even a Logitech G3 anymore, it's just a, mouse, a former G3 that we've used the shell from and then we tested that against the monitor, the LDAT module built into the 360 Hertz monitor. We tested that against the 1000 FPS camera and the module itself. And I will say this module here from Nvidia, they do send this out to reviewers 
and this is the first time I've been using this thing and it does give out very accurate results and the good thing about it is it does save a lot of time in terms of charting out those results because usually I have to get the 1000 FPS numbers, run them back through Adobe Premiere Pro each single run and what I was finding was the numbers were matching up pretty much perfectly with what this thing was putting out. So, so I got all these results done in one whole day rather than spending two full whole days and that's what this tool has enabled me to do. And also if you guys do wanna see some other tests, some other things you got on your mind, then do drop a comment or question in the comment section below. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. But basically when it comes to reflex, if you've got the option to turn it on, then just turn it on and leave it on if you want the best competitive gaming experience, at least from the standpoint of having reflex off versus on versus on plus boost. I would put it on on plus boost every single day of the week. But of course, having the skill, most important thing. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And we got the question of the day here, which comes from Dale. And they asked, hey, Brian, notice you've named the Ryzen 9 5800X. Loving the content though, mate. <laughs> so he's talking about the uh, previous video where we looked at the i5 11400F. And in one of the graphs, I put Ryzen 9 5800X. And so sometimes I'm doing the graphs and I'm just looking at the numbers and the the left hand panel there with all the names it's a little bit oblivious to me and look at it after the video is released and you're like oh yeah it is a ryzen 9 5800x but then again maybe amd might rename it a ryzen 9 5800x because intel they went from 10 cores to 8 cores and they they called it a 99 still so maybe that's the future just having your product SKU go up a name, but then downgrading the cause. Maybe I'm just predicting the future, but hope that answers that question. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.